Hi, I'm Ben. Welcome back to my channel where today I want to tell you about six more books to get excited about being released in 2023. Before we dive into the new new books, I have an update on one that I mentioned in my last video. So I am hyped about the new book by Taffy Bredessa Ackner, who wrote Fleischman is in Trouble. I really unexpectedly loved that novel and my appreciation for it has recently been reignited because the TV adaptation is utterly brilliant. Um, in the UK, it's available on Disney+. Plus. And Taffy Bredessa Ackner adapted it herself, which is awesome because I can't imagine it's easy to be a really good writer of novels and a really good writer of TV shows, but she's nailed both. Anyway, Bredessa Ackner's next novel is called Long Island Compromise and it was due out in October this year, but it has been pushed back to January 2025. Over a year's delay and I am so gutted really because... I was really looking forward to reading that later this year. I wonder if maybe the TV stuff has kept her too busy to get it out this year. Anyway, on to the new books, and they're being released between sort of now and October later this year. And I'll run through them in release date order so that you can build up a little bit of a calendar in your mind about what's coming up. Right, the first book I want to tell you about is called Titanium Noir by Nick Harkaway. It's being released on the 18th of May, which maybe in the past by the time I release this video, so it might already be out, um, but it's being published by Corsair, which is an imprint of Little Brown, and it's 256 pages long. Nick Harkaway is a British author who I don't hear talked about very much, actually, uh, but I read his book Tiger Man a few years ago and really enjoyed it. Tiger Man was this realist novel about uh, a vigilante superhero, but he tends to operate more in the fantasy sphere. And he's previously been nominated for the Arthur C. Clarke Award for Angel Maker. And he's got a few other titles that you may be aware of. He is the son of John le Carré, but considering how much of a surprise this was to me when I found out, I don't think of him as a Nepo baby, but who knows? He's written a few thrillers under a pseudonym, but Titanium Noir is his first work as Nick Harkaway since 2017. This latest novel from him seems to blend some of the previous genres he has explored, bringing together sci-fi and crime noir. The protagonist in this book is called Cal Sounder, and he's a detective called in to investigate the murder of a seven-foot-tall, 90-year-old that looks 30, Titan. And Titans, if you're wondering, are near-future societies genetically altered elites. The description says this is a tightly woven, intricate tale of murder, betrayal and violence. And it's been touted as a bit of a mixture of Raymond Chandler and William Gibson and described as lots of fun. I'm getting Blake Crouch vibes from it. And given Harkaway is an accomplished writer as far as I'm concerned and what I've read from him, this sounds like it has the potential to be really great. The next book I want to tell you about is published on the 8th of June and it's called Mrs. S by K. Patrick. It's been published by Fourth Estate, which is an imprint of HarperCollins, and it's 304 pages long. Kay Patrick is a poet and a writer based in Glasgow in Scotland, and they've recently been featured on the Granter Best of Young British Novelists 2023. And that's a list that only happens every 10 years, so it's a really big deal to be included on it. This is their debut novel, and it's a dark academia queer romance. It's set in an elite English boarding school, which is a bit of a catnip setting for me. And it's about an Australian woman that arrives to take up the role of matron and she feels really out of place. There's a sweltering heat wave that happens over the summer and in that time a love affair develops between the matron and the headmaster's wife. It sounds interesting and I've heard some really good things from advanced readers but my only nervousness is that the oppressive sapphic desire for an important man's wife reminds me a little bit of Cursed Bread. But I think my issues with that were more to do with my expectations than any real fault with the book itself. So yeah, colour me excited for this one. Next, we are moving into July. And on the 6th of July, there is a hotly anticipated follow-up coming out from Eliza Clark. She was the author of Boy Parts. And since the book was released, she has actually moved publishers going from Influx to Faber. So Boy Parts has recently had a reissue with a jazzy new font. Um, I'm really glad they've kept the image though because it feels very in keeping with the story and pretty iconic to be honest. But Eliza Clark's new book is also being published by Faber. It's 448 pages long and it's called Penance. Penance, like Titanium Noir, is a book about murder. This time though, it's a 16 year old in a sleepy seaside town. The book is set 10 years after the murder happens and we're following a journalist called Alec as he builds up a definitive account of the murder using 
witness accounts, interviews, correspondence, and all of that is woven into the book that we're reading. Sounds very much like Alec is going to be an unreliable narrator, though. And I'm really loving novels that play with truth and themes of who gets to tell which story. So I'm looking forward to Eliza Clark's take on this. Boy Parts had a really good style to it, and I, I loved the way that Eliza Clark wrote it was very conversational it was really entertaining and i hope this carries through into her new book next up is a book called my work by olga raven and you may know olga raven from a book published not that long ago called the employees which is i don't really know how to describe it actually it's a book that covers some events at a company in the near future told through a series of files and logs that you read I haven't actually read it, but I've I've heard it's quite unusual and quite fun, um, and I am really interested in it. Her new book, though, is also published by Lolly Editions on the 1st of September. It's a bit longer than The Employees, so it's 432 pages long, and it sounds like it might also be fairly formally inventive. So it's about a woman called Anna who feels quite lost after giving birth, And she develops an online obsession, very similar to what we all experience, really. She's doom scrolling and she's compulsively buying clothes online. To cope, though, she forces herself to write. And this apparently mixes lots of different literary forms. So she includes fiction, essay, poetry, memoir and letters, which reminds me a little bit of what Benjamin Myers is seemingly doing with Cuddy um, when he's telling the story of St Cuthbert. So it would be... Potentially very interesting to compare the two. Next, I want to talk about The Maniac by Benjamin Labatut, which is being published on the 7th of September by Pushkin Press. And I've got to say, I am really loving Pushkin Press as a publisher because every time I pick up a book that's got their name on it, I have this confidence that there's going to be really high quality work between the covers. And most of the time, I'm not disappointed. They're, they put out some really good stuff. This new book is a 368 page Follow up, not a sequel, to Labatut's previous book, When We Cease to Understand the World, which was released a couple of years ago and nominated for the International Booker Prize. It's a book that blended fact and fiction to tell stories of great scientific minds and the problems that they grappled with. Interestingly, that book was written originally in Spanish and then translated, but The Maniac is his first novel written in English. It's about John von Neumann, a real Hungarian-American mathematician and computer scientist who lived in the first half of the 20th century. He made so many contributions to science, but one really interesting one that's made its way into a lot of hard sci-fi is the von Neumann probe, which is a self-replicating spacecraft that would go out into the universe, land somewhere, mine for materials, and be able to build more of itself to explore further. He also worked on the Manhattan Project, which built the first atomic bombs, so it's possible he'll make an appearance in the upcoming Christopher Nolan film Oppenheimer. In fact, this might be a really good companion novel to that, whether he appears or not, because it will deal with the same sort of themes of science being pushed to its limits. Anyway, this seems to be a character study of von Neumann and the implications of his scientific endeavours and how they go beyond our comprehension and rationality. It again combines fact and fiction and is described as a dazzling kaleidoscopic book about the destructive chaos lurking in the history of computing and AI. Feels very relevant given the advancements and fears of generative AI so far in 2023. Chat GPT, watch your back. Finally, we've got a new novel from Alif Shafak being published on the 19th of October by Viking, which is an imprint of Penguin, and it's 320 pages long. Okay, this one... I mean, it's a little bit of a cheat because we know next to nothing about this book. And in fact, it is listed as Untitled 2, uh, which I assume is not the final title of this book. I just spied it on the Waterstones website as an upcoming release. But it does have a release date and a page count, so it is real. And I'm always really impressed at how prolific Elif Shafak is. Um, And she has tons of fans out there, so it's exciting that there's another new book coming up. Anyway, I still haven't read The Island of Missing Trees, which was her most recent novel and was nominated for the Women's Prize. It made the shortlist. Uh, But I did not that long ago, read The Architect's Apprentice. And I really loved it. It was a cracking historical novel, cradle to grave story set in the Ottoman Empire. Um, And I will link in the description 
the video where I read and reviewed that. Um, I quite enjoyed making that one. But yeah, can't wait for Untitled 2. Sounds like a banger. I would really respect the gumption of putting out a book called Untitled 2 though. So Penguin, if you're brave enough, consider this your challenge. So that was my Whistle Stop Tour Part 2 of 2023 releases. Hopefully you enjoyed it and there might be one or two or more novels on that list that pique your interest as well as mine. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And if there are any more books coming out in 2023 that I have not covered in either of my videos, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm always on the hunt for an exciting new release. But until next time, toodles. I'm